Hey guys, I'm Ashray from First Updates Now, and today we are here with Team 14481 Don't Blink from Plainsburg, New Jersey, here at the Maryland Tech Invitational. Uh, today we have with us Ashmet and Arush um, from 14A481, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their robot. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. AFTC fans, are you ready for Freight Frenzy? Join us after kickoff live all weekend, September 18th and 19th, as we'll be out at Kettering University for the Bulldogs Robot in 30 Hours at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. You'll get detailed breakdowns of game elements, the field, and prototyping and testing of robot components and assemblies. Watch live, view short videos after, and ask questions for the Kettering team at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. Uh, so just to start us off, how exactly does the ring travel to your robot? What exactly does your robot do? Yeah, for sure. To start off, we have a dual intake system. So on the front, we have an 18-inch wide intake that's controlled by two um, dead linkages right here. And we also have active vector pods, which are um, integrated into our drivetrain. So basically, these spin uh, sideways, um, powered through miter gears, and pretty much just guide the rings into the center of the robot. And then to go into the um, robot, we have a small bottom roller that spins in the opposite direction. And then we also have a back intake that is mostly for stacks. So we have a front bar on it, and it's mainly just for the starter stack in auto. And they go right in and up. And to talk about our junction a little bit, so the two paths for the back intake and the front intake um, meet. And we have a gecko or two right in the middle to act like a bottom roller for one of the sides and a top roller for the other. And then we have a big spin nexter that pretty much just flings the rings into our hopper. That looks so amazing, guys. I love how it's all funneled into one cohesive system. Uh, now, how exactly does your shooter work? And I see you have two wheels here. Uh, do both of them rotate? Yeah, so only one of them rotates. The, uh, this one is a one motor flywheel with an inertia wheel. And we have a gecko on the side for the compression. And this is adjustable from the bottom. So we can adjust it depending on what we want. And then we also have a flap at the bottom. Oh, it's powered right now, but it just basically just adjusts the angle of this so that we don't have to shoot at a um, crazy high RPM. Got it, that makes sense. And does this piece rotate? Can you guys shoot uh, the power shots and the high goals from like the same position? Yeah, so we can shoot um, pretty much from anywhere on the field. We have odometry tracking that Arsh can talk about too. And it just allows us to rotate the turret and the flap to shoot from anywhere. Got it. Yeah, and moving on to the software, I know you guys have some crazy awesome automation in your robot system. How exactly does your software work and what are the most uh, unique and innovative features of it? Yeah, so, you know, with software uh, and FTC generally, uh, it, it becomes really fun when you have a lot of mechanisms to work with. So <laughs> this year, since we implemented a turret, it was really nice for us because we were able to mess around with things that we hadn't before. And one of those things was feed forward. So a uh, close friend of mine from the Discord, Hinopede, um, he helped me through understanding a bit of feed forward uh, and how it works. And so on our turret, we actually have a feed forward system implemented with a regular PID. So the PID tracks the angle of the turret, but what the feed forward is used for is the velocity of the turret. So this allows us, when we rotate, it takes into account the robot's angular uh, velocities and the speeds that we read from the odometry to then turn our turret um, you know, more smoothly and accurately. And uh, it's still, it could still use a bit of refinement, but at this current stage, if we rotate like full speed to the right, the turret will still track the high goal uh, accurately. Um, so also with our odometry system, uh, not only do we use just three dead wheels, but we also integrated the IMU. So this is useful because uh, IMUs, generally if they work well, um, they have really, really precise uh, heading readings at a zero degree angle or wherever you start from. So for us, whenever the robot actually turns back to zero degrees and the IMU reads that, we reset the um, odometry position for our heading completely. So this allows for very accurate tracking throughout the field. And in some testing that we've done at our home field, we ended up with about um, under po half a degree of heading error over a match. Um, and we also call the IMU every 500 milliseconds, so this is not blocking. 
Got it. That all sounds great. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add about your team or about uh, your robot? Honestly, it looks amazing. And you guys have been doing great so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our team is very centric on um, you know building unique robots. So this year, um, instead of trying to build a very competitive robot, which obviously is a goal for us every season, we also tried to build something that was unique and try to step out of our comfort zone. Uh, so with this robot, even though we could use a bit of refinement on the field and um, in the coming matches we have at MTI, um, I think we still like managed to you know do a lot of the new things that we hadn't done in past seasons. So this includes like custom plates, 3D printing, and even you know cool mechanisms like our dual intake or turret. Yep. Um, and I think one more thing just to touch upon is like the power of connections in FTC. Uh, I know this is like more technical, but one thing that I found extremely helpful was like being able to connect with other teams, and MTI gave us a really nice opportunity for that. So you know by being able to talk to different people like you guys or like other teams here. Um, it really gave us like, a, like a sense of learning and knowledge like from the community, but it's also extremely fun. Yep. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, and good luck for the rest of your matches. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program, and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support Fun by joining Fun Nation. Click the Join button, and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.